Good morning, is this Heidi? It is. Hi, Heidi, this is Brittany from Fashion to Philly. How are you? I'm great, Brittany. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. I just, first of all, I want to thank you for taking out the time to want to do the interview. I really appreciate it. Oh, good. Um, I don't know how you do it. Your schedule is so busy. I mean, between being a mother, a wife, you're the founder of the nonprofit organization, The Fashionistas, and now you're part of the Big Rich Texas. Tell us how you balance out your life schedule. Well, in addition to all that, I'm also partner and executive producer for an L.A.-based television company called Morning Dew Pictures, and that's I've been working with um, my, my partners at Morning Dew for the past several years. So that really is, other than being a mother, like where my heart and my focus are right now. But it's a good question, you know, and that's like the question of the ages. How do, how do people, particularly women, balance all of these different aspects of their life? Right. And... First of all, it requires, um, you know, you can't do it alone. You can't, you have to just realize that you can't do everything and you can't do it alone. So as far as being a mother goes, uh, my husband is very proactive. I'm very blessed to have a wonderful, wonderful husband. We've been together for 35 years. Okay. And he's, um, you know, he's a great man. He's a great family man. And we have one son, Dallas, who we have later in life. I was 44 when we had our baby. Okay. So um, there's challenges that go along with that, being an older mom, but basically what he does for me is, uh, one of the things he does is he keeps me relevant. Are there any new projects uh, coming up for the Fashionistas organization? Yeah. We have, in June, we have located, you know, targeted this um, swimwear designer who lives and works here locally, and her work is incredible, and so we're doing... Um, a runway series. Twice a year we, we do a runway series where we sort of take someone who's at that point in their career where they could use a good platform and they're ready to take off and produce work and sell it, get in the stores and what have you. So we feel like she's at that point. And so. so how did you get your start in in the fashion industry? Well, I've always loved fashion my whole life. I've always been crazy for it. My first memories as a child were my mom taking me shopping and my grandma making me Vogue dresses from Vogue pattern books. And then I, um, I actually studied art in school. I have a master's degree in fine arts. And when I moved to New York with my husband uh, back in the 80s, I worked for Perry Ellis for a while when he was, you know, at the top of his game. Mm-hmm. And so that was very, very exciting. And then, um, you know, I've always been an aficionado of fashion reading, studying about fashion, and then I started the Fashionistas eight years ago. So it's always been, you know, art was always my, my thing, but then... You know, fashion is really part of the whole design thing. Uh, um, you know, not all fashion is art, but, mm-hmm. you know, there there is such a thing as fashion that has been elevated to an art form, and we there are many examples of that. It seems like you uh, do a lot of giving back to the community or reaching out. What inspires you to want to do such things? Well, Dallas is a very philanthropic city, and the minute that I moved here, which was 18 years ago, uh, first thing I did before our boxes even arrived was go and volunteer at the Dallas Museum of Art. Everybody needs to find a, a project, a cause about which they're passionate, whether, you know, there's so many different things, and everyone is good, whether it's, you know, helping, you know, raise money for a cure for a disease or for a woman's shelter or for children or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, the arts, whatever it is. It's all important. I mean, everybody should just pick one and, and and do something to help that cause. I know we've given it a lot of thought um, for the fashion of Philly. Like, we really want to start reaching out and maybe doing, like, in public, like a, a fashion show or something, sponsoring some type of nonprofit organization or what have you. But it's good to see, you know, the different ways that you've reached out. It gives me some inspiration, some type of ideas of how to get things started with that. Everybody loves a fashion show. Everybody. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, like, I'm involved in so many different fashion shows because there's lots of organizations that have them and you know lots of up and coming people and whether or not it's like kids who are in high school and sew some stuff on their mom's sewing machine and the moms get together and put on a little fashion show what is that one item in your life that you feel like you cannot live without it can be a technology item it could be a fashion accessory or anything what is that one item you feel like you have to have sunglasses (laughs) I feel like uh, Dallas has 
its own probably personal style. I know like every I feel like every city has its own unique personal style. What would you how would you describe the style of Dallas? Dallas women really, really love to get dressed up. You have to understand that we like to shop, we like to go to lunch, we like to go to events and like I said, it's a very philanthropic city and it, the philanthropy here and the events that that happen as a result of the philanthropic people I would drive the city in terms of the social and the way we dress you know, everything. Any given night in Dallas, you can go to at least five different events, and it's insane. You know, you can be out every night, event hopping. So people here really, really like to get dressed up. The young women here are very, very stylish, very, very attractive, and love, love the glamour, love getting dressed up, love the whole thing. I started the website to try to get try to get people to be aware of what is happening, like, fashion-wise in the Philadelphia area, because I feel like we always have a bad rap, too. Just like what you said about the big hair women and everything like that, I feel like we get a bad rap about just being sloppy up here. But there are those that do take the time to, like, you know, freshen up and really just get creative with fashion, and those are, that's pretty much what I wanted to highlight. Well, I think that's great, and I, you know, and I think the celebrity culture has had a lot to do with that because... You know, all these images are burned into our brain. We see, right. you know, every detail about what people are wearing. Is there any words of wisdom you can give to anyone looking to break out into the fashion industry? You just can't give up. I mean, it's not enough anymore to just be talented. It's not enough to be driven. You have to kind of be all things. Like, fashion is, is such a big business. It's, it's, you know, driven by, you know, numbers at this point. Mm-hmm. So if you're not the kind of person who, you know, is has that kind of brain, you need to to understand who you need to align yourself with to be successful. Because like I said when we first started talking, you can't do anything yourself. So if you're a talented fashion person, you know, you just you have to align yourself with the people who have skills that you don't have so that, you, you know, you can be a force. Okay, yeah. And, you know, just never give up if that's really what you believe in. And be realistic. Like, I, I talk to young people, and I love people who dream big because I do. But you have to be really realistic in your expectations. Like, people say, I want to build a brand like Ralph Lauren. Well, you know, let's back it up a little bit. You know, take one step at a time. Mm-hmm. It really is one step at a time. And it's like, you know, and you have to toughen your skin because there's just, when you're doing something like that, like television or fashion or art or whatever it is, it's probably like 99% rejection. <laughs> and you live for that 1% of acceptance, you know, like in television, 98.5% of the shows that are ever pitched are rejected. So you're, it's numbers, and you have to have the tenacity and the thick skin and the passion and the drive and not let up. Is there any social uh, media outlets that you want us to know about? I know that you're on Twitter. Yeah. Twitter, and then, um, well, Fashionistas, we have two like pages, one for the Fashionistas, one for the Fashionistas, two, our student group. Okay, thank you very much, and have a nice day or a nice weekend. 